Orchester, hier gibt es kein Gewinn. The years following a German victory in the Great War would see many governments fall, especially in the former nations of the Entente. Britain would be the only nation which could remain stable, though they would plunge themselves into complete isolation from Europe. Not only this, but they would lose Ireland in its entirety by demand of the Germans. The Italian people would be furious. Their already damaged economy would be crushed by the reparations and territorial losses to the Germans and Austrians. Italian democracy would fall much earlier than in our own timeline. I could see a Russian-inspired communist revolution as the communists were the biggest opposition force to the Italian government at the time. France is a complicated subject. I doubt they could keep their democracy intact either. However, which way they would fall is up to debate. Right and left-wing forces would clash in the streets as they did in our timelines Germany. Monarchist restoration groups like Action Francais might even see a resurgence. No matter where they fell, however, they would find a natural ally in the Italians and Soviets, all wanting to retake what Germany had taken from them. Speaking of Germany, the pre-war status quo would not survive there earlier. During the war, the military had taken more and more control away from the Kaiser and effectively gained control over the government. A swift internal coup would reduce Wilhelm II to a shadow Kaiser of the military government. Looking south, we find a victorious Austria-Hungary. And for their victory, they get complete chaos and imminent collapse. Not only would non-Austrian nationalists terrorize the government, so would Austrian nationalists, who would be furious at the Habsburgs for being unable to control and stabilize the realm, and for embarrassing the Austrian people during the Great War. A coup d'etat deposes the Habsburgs, and a nationalist dictatorship is declared. Hungarian secession follows directly after. This leads to all non-Austrian ethnic groups to do the same. Unable to stop the collapse, the Austrians allowed the states to leave the empire. The Balkans once again become an arena as the Austrians, Italians, Romanians, and others compete to secure their interests. The Italians seize the coast of Dalmatia and conflict between Romania and Hungary erupts for territory. Meanwhile, in German Eastern Europe, trouble would begin to brew. Nationalistic sentiment would lead to resistance to the German occupying force in the lands. This resistance would be crushed by the Germans, but a resurgent Soviets would begin arming the rebellions to undermine the Germans. Not only this, but they would also fund underground communist groups in Germany with the help of Italy and potentially France. As the 20s continue, German stability begins to decline. In contrast, however, the economy of Germany flourishes as they had become the economic center of the globe following their victory in the Great War. But as we saw with America in our own timeline, this is a very fragile position to be in, and an economic collapse could easily take place for the same reasons the Great Depression did, but this time centered around Germany. As the German economy plummeted, the economically independent nations of the Soviet Union, Italy, and France would see themselves rise to some of the strongest economies in Europe. As such, they would begin orienting them for war. By the mid-30s, remilitarization would be in full swing. Now, turning south, we find the Ottomans, who would struggle from Arab revolts being funded by the House of Saud, who would be trying to undermine the Sultan. So even if the Ottomans regained some former power and land after the war, they would be too weak to protect their power, especially in Europe, as they are blocked by their former ally Bulgaria, who had gained even more power from the collapse of Austria-Hungary. Speaking of the collapse of Austria-Hungary, I believe the battle for influence there could be a likely trigger for World War II. As the Italians regain military power, they intervene in the Croatian-Bosnian region to secure their influence. Seeing this, the Austrians send their own armies down to secure their influence. A confrontation could easily occur, ending in a battle. The battle leads to war. The Germans support the Austrians, the Soviets and French support the Italians. Speaking of Italy, they would be a much better fighting force in this timeline. Mussolini's Italy's army was so ineffective because the Il Duce bloated it with a bureaucracy in which his friends and political allies were elevated to positions of power. This hindered the Italian army's ability to fight. Unless this timeline's communist leader of Italy does the exact same thing, the Italians would be a legitimate fighting force in the war. The anti-German alliance would have another advantage in said war. 
Throughout its duration, the Germans would have to divert troops to pacify resistance in German-occupied Europe. Not only this, but German communist groups, funded by the Soviets, Italians, and French, would begin operations to hinder the German war effort. Because of these facts, along with the anti-German alliance being much better geared for war at the outset of the conflict, I believe it could be a rather even fight. The Americans would act as a bit of a wild card, as they would not be eager to support communists or their economic rivals in Germany. And so, the fate of the world would once again hang in the balance. Would the Germans win another in a long line of victories and assert themselves as the sole superpower of the world? Or would the non-German alliance stop this fate and finally crush Germany? In the end, there is no way of knowing. Nor is there a way to accurately predict the events that I described in this video. This is just one scenario. Don't be afraid to comment what you think would have happened following a German victory in World War I. Oh yeah, and also, <clears throat> subscribe and like. <clears throat>